Hello there again, friends. Today is 2-7-2022, and today is the Odin vlog Project Vlog Day 55. And technically, it's like 58. Um, we'll get into that. Um, I did not put a video out this weekend, and I'm sorry about that. Um, I keep my promise to you guys that I try to bring as much value to this channel as I could, as I can. And I literally spent all weekend on this last optional exercise because it was a doozy uh we'll <clears throat> i'll get into that in a minute but basically i spent all day saturday and all day sunday <clears throat> trying different things and racking my brain over this this part here and so i wasn't ready to put out a video and um and then early this morning i was working on it and I had my aha moment and I got it to figure out. So I'll I'll lead you through that journey and how that came about here uh, momentarily. So without further ado, let's get started. So number five, the last section is optional. It says instead of just changing the color of a square from black to white, for example, have each pass through. <coughs> excuse me. Have each pass through with the mouse change it to a completely different and random RGB value. Then try each pass just add another 10% of black to it so that the only after so that I can't read today the so that only after 10 passes is the square completely black push your project to github so I had zero issues on Saturday getting implementing the random RGB value so I'll show you how I did that here in a moment the thing that got me though was when they wanted you to change it up and try to have each pass add another 10% of black so that after 10 passes the square is completely black. So to make a long story short, um, I, I was trying to make this work and, on Saturday and I could not get it to work. I kept, I did council logs, I was doing everything I could to make sure that my logic was right. My logic wasn't right. Um, I <clears throat> was unable to figure it out. Long story short. I didn't take screenshots. Um, I'm not going to show you. So I'm not going to show you what I had. Because it was pretty much a hack job anyway. It got to the point where I was literally throwing mud at the wall. To see what sticks and what doesn't. And literally Saturday was just a miss after miss after miss. <laughs> Nothing was sticking. So... I decided to stop, stop the madness, and I reached out Saturday night to the Discord group uh, for help. My first time I've ever gotten stuck in a project and I asked for help, which I'm humbly admitting to you guys. I Again, I've always told you I don't know everything. My code may not be the most savvy way to do things. It may not be the best way. It's just my way, but I just cannot get this to work. So I reached out, and they gave me some hints. Um, some RGB manipulation hints, if you will. So enough for me to get my wheels turning. So then I went back to my code base, and they gave me basically a generic article that went over RGB and how to set it, basically. But the problem was I then was throwing mud at the wall again because I was trying to figure out how to uh, change type of RGB and at the same time do calculations to get it to do 10% to black no matter what shade it is if it's you know because it's a random shade so it could be a random color of anything to get it to go 10% black it was very very hard so I was trying to do multiple things at once and I couldn't get it to work and then I kept trying kept trying got ticked off went to bed sun Saturday night so this comes into Sunday morning um Hung out with the family, went to church, you know, all that stuff. And then um, hit the code again and got didn't get any farther. I thought maybe after a night, good night's rest I'd get it. Didn't get it. Went back to um, went back to help the GitHub, or not GitHub, excuse me, the Discord group again uh, for additional help. And um, I got the idea to try doing opacity as a second variable and so that actually worked and that's the avenue I went so we're gonna explore that now so basically instead of going to black I completely left I just basically trashed the idea of going to black that just wasn't gonna happen 
So I'll, sh I'll walk through the code and you'll see what it what it ends up doing. And this is at the basically at the discretion and recommendation from the second person that helped me, a different person that second time in the Discord chat. Basically said, we've seen this before. The best solution is to not necessarily get it to go to black, just get it to go completely solid in the random color that it's generated in that box. So that's what I did. Sorry I took so long to talk into this, but I wanted to give you guys that precursor and set you up there. So we're, we're back here in the make grid function, and we're down here. I'm not going to go over all this because we've went over it already in other videos, but I'm just going to add go over the additions and changes. So we are down here to this section here. This was already in here. I just, um, uh, all I did was uh, comment it, you know, and make it spacing it out so it reads nice and it's view easy viewable on the eyes. So here's our mouse over listener. It's inside the for loop. So this, so what this does is adds event listener to check for background color presence. And then this section here, this if, it runs a check to see if the background color is present. If not, it applies a random color and adds 10% opacity interval. So here's what that looks like. So if square dot style dot background color is equal in value and type to basically a blank, a blank string, it will create a variable called color and it will invoke the get random color function and if you go down here the get random function get random color function just does creates three variables o r and s and uh, and they take the value of math dot random math dot round and 255 and that's just for the sake of being able to do uh, mathematical operations so we're going to return um, rgb and then as our string and then with the parentheses and inside the parentheses we're just doing a bunch of math so basically we're going to do r uh, which is uh, math.random with no value inside of it so and it returns a pseudo pseudo random number between a 0 and 1 times that by s which is 255 which is the full 255 is the full length of name the full namespace of all RGB and then run that value uh, through O which is math.round basically returns the supplied numeric expression around to the nearest integer so that value get placed there and then secondly we're going to add a comma plus an another exact statement as before so we're creating a random random red a random green and then the B for blue is going to be the same thing again so we're creating completely random red green and blues and we're going to add our M end parentheses there and then that returns that up and that gets uh, consumed right here into color because I put it as a variable at declaration and then square dot style dot background color equals color that just instantiates uh, what we got here, the ver the return value of get random color into the background color at this particular junction of te of the code, and then we're also going to uh, call square square dot style dot opacity and make it equal to the string of point ten, which is the value you put in. Opacity is a string, as you see there. Um, so you have to do string character uh, double quotes um, to get that so dot 10 uh, or period 10 point 10 however you want to say it <coughs> excuse me is uh, 10 percent and I chose that because the requirements it, are that we want to increase it by 10 percent each time so then we're going to return the value squared out style dot background back out of the if statement and it will return it back up here and then it'll it'll reevaluate everything and so next time it comes through on a mouse over action we're going to say okay so this is going to be now it's going to skip over this if if we're on that same um, square if you will because 
this is not blank anymore. Black background color now has a value. So we'll go down here to this if statement, and its comment says apply additional opacity at 10% intervals, hard stop at 0.1.0. Um, actually, that would be, yeah, that's right, 100% if background color is present. So what this does is creates if has two, uh, if you see two, and they both they have ampersand, so ha both these have to be true, and. So if you square dot style dot background color is not empty, meaning it has a value in it. <clears throat> Remember, we don't care what color it is, it's just that it has a color. And square dot style dot opacity, opacity, however you want to say that, is less than or equal to 0.90. And I had it at 1.0, but yet I, I changed it because uh, 0.90 is because when you run this through the last time, it will update the background color by adding the 0.10 to get the 1 in here and it's just for accuracy because if you put this to 1.0 when this loops through and runs again or not loops through but when it comes through and reevaluates um, it will end up my console.log showed me a 1.1 because it added an additional tenth um, so um, that's why I put it to 0.90 there's other ways to do that, but just in case you're wondering it, why it doesn't say 1.0, that's why. Because the, um, basically the uh, return statement is, is ahead of the evaluation, so it's going to be applied ahead of before it's reevaluated. So you have to stop at 1 before, basically. So uh, anyway, so we have inside the if statement, so if this and this are true which means the background color is not empty meaning there's something in it and opacity is anything other than 0.90 uh, less than that, that I mean anything less than 0.90 it's going to do square dot style dot opacity and that's going to take on the parse float square style opacity which that is basically a converts a string to a floating point number if you remember, I had mentioned earlier, opacity is a string, so you have to do that to convert it to be able to add 0.10. And I had to Google the crap out of this because I didn't have this in here for the longest time. That's one of the big pain points I had, uh, many pain points, but one of them was this. I kept trying to add opacity plus 10, which, as you know, if you try to add a string and a value, no matter if it has quotes or, or just a numerical value, it's going to concatenate it if you're adding it's not going to add them. <laughs> so I had to convert this and parse float converts that to an int uh, floating point number to be exact. And then you return and then that e equals that value becomes square dot style dot opacity which again become t converts it automatically back into a string because opacity cannot take as weird as it sounds because it's a value. The opacity um, <clears throat> CSS style in in dot in in the DOM at wise and JavaScript cannot take a value; it has to take a string. And then you return um, square dot style dot background color back out, and it'll just keep looping through. I say loop, but it's going to return back, so it's going to return back to the mouse over and just wait for more. And so when it comes down here and this evaluates uh, false. Uh, basically this will always be uh, true because you're always going to have at this point your background color is always going to have something so the key is is when I added see I didn't have this in originally and I had to figure out how to get the program to stop basically and this is how I got it to stop so when it evaluates this and you know 1.0 is greater than 0 0.90 uh, then it cuts it actually breaks out of the if and then you know stops the program so that is it that's the explanation of of that last section so short and sweet today even though this was definitely not a short and sweet um, uh, endeavor so as you can see through these couple if statements and what I've got going on here uh, so I get my random color via my function and I am changing the opacity I I, you can see I've stopped trying to attempt to get the random color to go to black at 10% increments. It can be done. I know it can be. Otherwise, they wouldn't put it in there. But it would. It takes a substantial amount of more code 
and more more processing than I was able to figure out. So at the again at the recommendation of the second uh, helper on the Discord group, they said basically just do this. Uh, he said that we run into this all the time, and he said I recommend just doing this. It still gets the job done. It just doesn't go black. So I'd be curious in the comments if you guys got black to work. Uh, at 10%, uh, share your code in the comments below and uh, let us all know how you did it because uh, I'd be super curious because I know it can be done. I just, the combination of his recommendation and he was a Club 40 member along with basically me being exhausted of this and, <laughs> and needing to be move, need to move on with life, um, <laughs> I uh, I stopped and I took it, I very well, 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 with welcome arms took his recommendation to uh to work with opacity so instead um, because I was trying to do everything with background color and that was another part of my hang up is you can't it's hard to evaluate background color and change it at the same time so this made more sense to me anyway because you're basically evaluating you know opac opacity opacity but you're you know basing it on background color which makes coding a whole, in my opinion a whole lot easier when you're dealing with two different variables versus just one um, because you can't run a loop I tried doing that many times and uh, I end up running a four inside of a four and you can't do that it crashes the browser I learned that the hard way <laughs> before I realized what was going on why it wasn't working so um, anyway yeah so this was a learning stretch for me for sure and an example to all you guys that don't be afraid to Stop beating your head on the keyboard, take a break, which I did, but maybe take more breaks than what I did <laughs> more often. And then if you really get stuck, as long as you format your question properly, Discord will help you. So the Discord group's very helpful. They're, very, they're there to help you and help you with your journey if you get stuck and you need some help. And they are pretty responsive. So um, that'll be it for this video. I won't make it any longer than it needs to be. So... Uh, with that said, uh, please like, share, and subscribe for more content, and until next time, see ya.